So, on today's video, we're going to cover off this. I know it's not another Ventoy video. What we're going to be discussing today is every IT engineer's biggest dream, and that's a USB that can help when there's a major problem. Now, back in the day, we used to use something called Ultimate Boot CD or Hiram's Boot CD, which was your kind of catch-all for antivirus, memory testing programs, etc. Some of these also have password unlocking tools, which this one certainly does. And a little mild disclaimer, when you do this, you are certainly going to get Windows Defender in particular. Panic somewhat, because it absolutely thinks that stuff on here shouldn't be there. I can rest assure you there is no malware or anything like that attached to this device. It just so happens that some of the stuff in here can obviously manipulate your system files. So therefore, Windows Defender catches them as false positives. You'll find this a lot if you've ever used any kind of pen testing tools, etc. as well, or anything that can basically leverage password cracking tools, etc. Windows Defender will always have an absolute field day and nightmare with those. So please be rest assured that the tools on here are perfectly safe to use. However, I will carry that as do not use them in a corporate environment. Unless, of course, you're head of security and nobody else is going to fire you then maybe you can get away with it. But yeah, needless to say, let's go ahead and show you how that can save the day. So this is what we're gonna be looking at today. And we'll start off at the Medicap USB site. Links will be in the description. You can pretty much see here that yes, like most people, they hate ads, but they've recommended that you do use a ad blocker. But as most people, support generally does come from ads. So if you can't support them this way, Let's try and find another way to support them. Maybe reach out to the team or to Discord, etc. Now, I think how they've sold this particularly is all these wonderful cute kittens across the bottom. Who doesn't like a cat? It's quite simply all we really need to do. If you want to kind of get a little bit around the documentation, you can go there, you can join the Discord and kind of get a little bit more information. But let's just start with the quite simple, obvious area of let's get an installer. Um, I've got my stick ready to go. All we'll do is I'm running on Windows. You can absolutely install it on Linux as well. Process isn't much different. Um, we'll download this application and we'll run the installer. Now you'll see straight away, Windows Defender is already starting to ask questions. I'm just gonna pop the USB in and we'll just let that sit there. Okay, so let's run anyway. Perfectly fine and safe to do so. And you'll notice that what it wants to do is use Windows command. So. Again, it's just a batch file that runs. Now, the good thing is it does come up with a little bit about reading the tool. It does say about uh, if you do not trust it, don't use it. Like I said, it's not going to do anything harmful to your machine. So you can quite happily press any key at this point. And it will download all the initial files. And there's a wonderful little PowerShell. I mean, amazing. Look at that. An ASCII cat. So let's stick any key to continue. And there's a wonderful bit in there saying if you pay for this software, you've got scammed. Hopefully you've never paid for this. It's totally free of charge. Um, I don't receive anything for helping you with this video at all. So realistically, yeah, if you paid for it, you certainly need to get in touch. And also let the developer know as well, because they certainly shouldn't be charging you for this software. Press any key to continue. And then we've got the options of what we're going to do to install. Now, I'll just make a few things clear that you can change stuff in here. So if I toggle drive format currently no, all that's going to do is basically, if I've already got a Ventoid disk set up, I could use that option. Don't use that any other time because all that's doing is if you've already got Ventoid set up and it's installed, it will just layer on top the stuff that's needed. So in my case, I haven't got that. These are just buttons, so there's nothing particularly uh, sophisticated about it, but we can just click on install Medicap. Now what it's going to do is it's going to download the latest version of Ventoy, which at the time publishing, I'm quite, quite sure what it is. And then we'll select the drive that we're going to deploy to. So for my case, it will be drive G. I would recommend the largest possible USB you can have because size does matter. But apart from that, obviously the options there are endless for other stuff you can add to this disk because realistically it's just Ventoy. So we'll select G, I'm using a 64 gig, so only available will be about 60, but it's almost like a perfect size for this kind of thing. 
click OK, and it will then ask you to confirm. Now, the reason it does this is because what it doesn't want to do is overwrite a drive that you've selected by mistake. So basically, if it's correct, hit Enter. If not, type it in. Yeah, I will hit Enter. And then it will say, would you like to use GPT? Now, <laughs> this isn't the chat one, right? This isn't AI. It's not anything like that. Basically, what it's saying is it's basically a partition table. So some use MBR, some use GPT. I would say in 99% of cases, GPT will be absolutely fine. So select yes. And also, do you want to use Secure Boot? Again, this is another optional task. Now, you can say no. However, if you say no, what you're then going to need to do is, in the bias of the machine, is set it to no on Secure Boot. If you do select Secure Boot, yes, then you're going to have to enroll the key, which varies from model to model, but usually when you boot up this disk, it will ask you to enroll the key and you can just click down. Some of them you have to do them in the BIOS, etc. It varies by vendor. So we're going to click yes. Now all it's going to do is say sometimes Venue messes up a drive. Oh, let's hit enter, which we are enter, so that's fine, absolutely. So I'll let that go and do its thing. And then it's saying it could not find the Medicat files. So there's a couple of ways you could do this. You can go and download them manually, or you can absolutely have this do them for you. So in this case, I'm going to click yes. There's a couple of options. There's a torrent or a slower. Now I don't have a torrent uh, program installed. So I'll just click the slower. And what that will do is pull down those bits for us. Now we can pre-download these. So if you look in here on this particular area, let's just move that over you can grab them here. So it's up to you if you want to do this, but I think for ease of use, just let the system do it. Let it run away, let it grab those files. You can probably go make yourself a cup of tea. As you can see, progress yeah, is getting there. I would probably strongly suggest that you do download these files separately. If you do select no, what it will do is just ask you to point to the 7-zip file and it will do the rest for you. Um, but I'm just doing it this way because I wanted a T. So there we are. I could have probably flown to India and picked my own tea leaves in the time that's taken. However, what I would suggest is that you have the option to download it. And then it just goes through this stage. So it just basically unpacks all of these. Now, this is likely where the defender may have a few challenges. It may pop up with the odd threat uh, come up at the bottom there. I strongly suggest that, though, you can just make your own informed decisions on them. Um, but as I said, there's nothing on there that's going to negatively impact you. You'll notice that the Medicat installer is complete and it says pressing the key to continue, so I'll drop that off. And all it's now doing is basically checking uh, that to make sure everything's okay. And it will tell me if anything's bad or missing. Now, obviously, if something comes up missing, that's going to mean that my um, antivirus has picked it up and I can then remediate that myself. So we'll let this finish and then I'll show you what happens when you actually connect it up to a machine. You can see the things that uh, the antivirus has triggered and it's pretty much all the near soft stuff, which again, if you just actually look at what it does, you can probably understand why it's triggering. So it's up to you. If you wanna go and manually install those and reconnect those back in, you can. If not, you can continue without, it just means that they won't work when you click on them. So it's totally up to you how you want to kind of proceed. So when booted up, what we'll see is this fairly familiar looking uh, setup. So it'll look a little bit similar to the way Ventoy is. Obviously, it's a very custom menu and you've got all the options in here. So we go into antivirus, for example, you can see malware bytes, etc. in there, backup and recovery. I used to use a Chronish True Image back in the day. Absolutely amazing product. Uh, even Synamtech Ghost in there as well. So pretty familiar type backup bits. Boot repair. We've got all those ones that sit in that area there. Pretty much happy to run. Uh, we've got uh, diagnostic tools. So Memtest 86, which I'll show you in a moment. Absolutely amazing tool. Uh, oh, my Boot CD. So as I mentioned, it was a great tool back in the day. 
Uh, live operating system. So if you want to be able to go into any of these, you've got the uh, Mini Windows 10, System Rescue, Active Data Studio, that kind of thing. They're all there, ready to go. Uh, partition tools. Again, all those kind of standard ones in there to help you solve partition challenges. Uh, password removal. So there's some in there. Now, I hadn't restored really those ones that shouldn't sit here, but obviously there would be some others there. And the great thing is it's also got recovery disks, which this is amazing. So you've got the option to just do a Windows 11 recovery straight from here. Now, some will run with UEFI. Some will have to run with BIOS. So you can change that in your BIOS settings yourself to solve that problem. Let's just pick one up that uh, let's do backup recovery across to image. And this one will run off and grab us what we need. And there we are, that's the Cronus True Image running off that USB, so that gives us the option to just back up and restore our device. So really straightforward. Like I said, some will run under UEFI, others you're going to need to swap your BIOS back to BIOS mode. Um, you should know how to do that. If you don't, I'll do a video on that in the not too distant future. So it's pretty crazy, isn't it, to feel that this device here has absolutely saved a lot of problems and a lot of hassle for us. There's many times, particularly if you work in IT, that you'll always get that phone call that says, hi, you know how to fix laptops, don't you? Or you can fix my computer. Well, just send them this bloody drive. Um, no, I'm only joking. Obviously, it's something particularly useful to have in your toolkit that helps you go along. Now, the fact it's already a modified version of Ventoy means that you can then also add in some additional ISOs, etc., and just pack this out however you like. Now, I strongly suggest that you do know what you're doing when you use some of these tools. If you're not quite sure, go and research. Don't just start using tools willy-nilly. But having worked in this kind of field for a long time, some of the tooling on here is an absolute godsend when it comes to that disaster recovery, particularly with those kind of uh, pre-environments that are already built out. It kind of takes away that need of potentially infecting uh, this particular device or any other device if you're trying to recover from a disaster event. And this is usually why you'd use this kind of device. So if you have liked this video, which hopefully you have, Again, it'd be really helpful to me if you hit that subscribe button and also the like and maybe the bell just to add a little bit of Christmas cheer ready for the seasonal period. Anyway, I will see you next time.